The following podcast is going to contain spoilers along with me, just a regular guy, talking about all the things I love, such as comics, movies, television, music, and books. So yeah, proceed at your own risk. Welcome to another episode of Just Another Fanboy. Wow, I almost forgot the name of my podcast there for just a moment. Hey, everybody, I'm your host. My name is Steven, and I read something the other day that's just had me chewing nails ever since. I was out on Twitter, and I came across an article. Somebody had retweeted it. I think it was in Forbes, and ultimately what it was saying was that Warner Brothers can't figure out what to do with Superman in regard to movies because they because they can't figure out how to make him relatable to modern audiences. And that, I, I, I got to tell you, that just aggravated me straight to the core. Now, I'm not angry at Forbes. The statement itself is true. It does seem that Warner Brothers has no clue what to do with Superman. Whoever's in charge over there still, I guess, seems to think that dark and gritty regardless of who the hero is. Now, that's I guess that's not true because they did Shazam. That wasn't dark and gritty, and it did pretty well. It was a good movie. But for Superman, they seem to want to make him just this dark, brooding, conflicted, introspective type of character, and they don't, they don't get it. To me, it seems pretty simple. You take away Superman's powers, and in the end, he's just a regular guy. He's just a regular guy who was raised with good moral values who just wants to do good things. He wants to help people. That's what he wants to do. He's got great power, and he feels that there is great responsibility behind it. He wants to help people. I don't understand why that's so difficult to understand, because here's the thing. It seems like for years and years, a lot of writers, I not all of them, certain, you know, the good writers, they get it. They can they can do what needs to be done. But I've I've read articles now and then from writers that they don't want to tackle Superman because they can't they can't seem to figure out how to make Superman relevant. How do you how do you get an audience to relate to a guy who basically has godlike powers? And I grew up loving Superman. I still love Superman, and I don't have godlike superpowers. I didn't live in a big city like Metropolis. I don't have some big highfalutin job as a reporter on a newspaper. And yet I could relate to Superman because he just wanted to help people. And I found that wonderful. He would literally die in service of helping people because he did it in the death of Superman. Now, I read something today that brought this all back because I'm out on the old Reddit I don't know why I got to say oh in front of everything. I don't know. I'm not folksy. Why am I trying to be folksy? I'm out on Reddit. I had started a post on there on John Byrne's Superman run because that's the Superman I grew up with was John Byrne. And one of the members there at Reddit, he goes by the name of Cowboy Pete. He posted something about John Byrne's run that never, never dawned on me. I think subconsciously I knew it was there. I never understood what it was about Superman, truly, I guess, that I liked and what it was about John Byrne's run that I liked over many of the others until this guy posted a reply to my thread about John Byrne's Superman. And what he said basically was that the one thing that John Byrne did was that he made it, he when he rebooted, when he redid Superman's origin, he made it so that Superman didn't learn he was an alien until after he was Superman. So he's Superman, he's got the cape, he's got the costume. He knows he has all these powers and he doesn't learn. He knew that he was adopted. He learns that from his parents. He knew that they they got him in a rocket ship, but they always assumed he was some sort of experiment or whatnot. He, they've just always assumed he was human, but he finds out after he becomes Superman that he was an alien, that he came from the planet Krypton. Now, the reason why that is important is because 
the alien side of Superman at that point does not really incorporate into the way he was raised, into his upbringing, into his his uh, his set of values and the way he looks at life and the way he looks at the world around him. You know, it's not until he's in his 20s that he finds out he's an alien. And I think the two big things, when somebody gets a hold of the Superman property and they have problems with it, I think the two big things that they wrestle with the most is his alien heritage and his superpowers. So John Byrne, to an extent, he, he, he minimizes that alien heritage. It's really not a focal point of Superman. He also depowers him. He's not as powerful in John Byrne's run. He's still, he's still Superman, but he's not as powerful. So basically what I'm saying is Warner Brothers just needs to take a cue from the John Byrne run and stop focusing on the alien heritage. Stop focusing on the fact that he has these godlike powers because that's what they try to do. They try to take it as like a, a, a study of the human psyche. How does this man who has the powers of a god and has an a, this alien heritage, how does he make himself feel relevant in today's society? Who cares? That's not who Superman is. Superman just happens to be a guy with superpowers and a freaking cape. The thing about Superman is if let's let's take away his superpowers. Let's say he was the Earth's yellow sun did nothing to him. It didn't give him any superpowers. He's just a regular dude. Guess what? he's probably going to be out there still helping people as much as he can. He's going to be working at, you know, soup kitchens and homeless shelters. And and he's going to be doing what he can that's within his resources, that's within his power to try to make the world a better place. And that's who Superman is. That's who Clark Kent is. I think what Cowboy Pete, I think what he said in the Reddit post was, Kal-El doesn't really enter into it all that much. And you get you get like uh, whoever's in charge over at Warner Brothers, and they're they're thinking, how do we how do we reconcile Clark Kent with Kal El with Superman? How do we make people relate to this alien? He's not from Earth. He's an alien with godlike superpowers. How can the average person relate to that? Because he was freaking raised in Kansas. He might as well have been born in Kansas by a loving couple in a rural area who was raised to do the right thing. I don't understand why that's so hard to figure out. John Loveless on Twitter, he basically said, "There, look, look at the Captain America movies. You take away the fact that, you know, Cap, Let's face it, he 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 really hurts people and kills people. He's that's that's what he does. He's and you can't regardless of what they did in the comics where Captain America didn't use a gun and he wouldn't kill people. He was he was a a soldier in World War II. He's a soldier. He's going to do what needs to be done to help people. Take that away. That's freaking Superman right there. They're already making Superman movies to an extent. They're called Captain America. Are you telling me that these Thor movies that make millions and millions and millions of dollars that the audience that's going to these Thor movies can relate to Thor? Why can't they figure out Superman? Now, I'm more of a Marvel guy. I, growing up, I've always been a Marvel guy, much more of a Marvel guy than a DC guy. I was probably reading comics for three or four years before I even started reading DC comics. It was all Marvel. But if you ask me who my favorite superhero is, it's Superman. So why can't someone at Warner Brothers... Figure Superman out. I feel, and this is just pure, pure postulation on my part. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. But I'm assuming that the people that they have in charge, I feel like with Marvel, in the end, it comes down to Kevin Feige. Granted, Marvel is owned by Disney and Disney is a huge corporation, but I feel like there's a, there's a face there. There's Kevin Feige. The buck stops with him and he gets it. He gets comic books. I think over at Warner Brothers, it's more like a, a boardroom full of people making these creative decisions that aren't creative people at all. They're trying to determine how to make a new Superman movie, how to make Superman more relevant, how to make Superman more relatable based off of marketing data. And that's why they keep failing. There's a reason that Justice League didn't do well in the theater. Justice League should have been huge, but Warner Brothers rushed it out because they got to make their scratch. 
They gots to make that money. They didn't want to follow the Marvel formula. They didn't want to establish the world. They just wanted to throw the world in your face. And they were hoping that they would make hundreds of millions of dollars before you figured out that it wasn't very good. The problem with that is then there's no longevity. Nobody's going to want to go see a Justice League 2 because Justice League 1 was so terrible. Now, Man of Steel, I enjoyed that movie. A lot of people had problems with that movie. I did enjoy it. I do think it was a bit, I don't want to use the word dark, but I do think it was a bit moody for a Superman movie. I don't think they quite hit upon what Superman is. And, you know, everything I've read about Zack Schneider, he he doesn't get it. He wasn't. He wasn't making a Superman movie because he loves Superman. He gets who Superman is. He's grown up reading Superman, and he gets it. He has no idea. I think a a quote I heard him at some panel that that people have talked about is when he's talking about Batman, and he says, well, of course Batman kills people. Anybody who thinks Batman doesn't kill people is freaking stupid. Something to that effect. And no, Batman doesn't kill. See, you don't get it. Just because you can make a visually appealing movie doesn't mean you should be making the movie. Now, saying that again, I enjoyed Man of Steel. And I enjoyed the second Superman movie with Batman in it up to a certain point. Right up to that point where it really, you could really tell that 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 Warner Brothers said, holy crap, look at all this money that Marvel is making with their movies. We got to do that. Let's start throwing a whole bunch of crap into this Superman movie. Let's just freaking open up the world. Let's not introduce it to people. Let's throw this world into their faces, and then we can do a Justice League movie right after. Because if we just throw all these characters in here, you know, even just for a second, that movie made no sense. (laughs) Superman versus Batman, whatever it was called, Superman v. Batman, Batman v. Superman, whatever it was called, it made no sense. And I wanted to like it. I wanted to like it so much, and I just didn't. And then Justice League comes along, and again, I'm a Marvel guy, but I do like DC, and I really wanted to like the Justice League as well, and I didn't. Now, I liked Aquaman. I liked Shazam. I've yet to see Wonder Woman. What's wrong with me? I really need to just rent that freaking thing and watch it because I hear it's really good. Now, what's the difference, I guess, I guess the, the, the theory that I've always had, what's the biggest difference between the Aquaman movie, you got the Aquaman movie, you've got the Wonder Woman movie, and you've got Shazam. You've got those three movies on one side, and then you've got Justice League on the other. What's the biggest difference between those two sides? I feel like the, the three movies over here that did really well, based on stuff I've read and just feelings that I've had, Warner Brothers at that point wasn't trying to make that Marvel money to a certain extent, like they were with Justice League. I feel like the, those three movies were more creator-influenced than corporation-influenced. You know what I'm saying? So when I read an article about how Warner Brothers can't figure out how to make Superman relatable to modern ov- audiences, it just makes me angry because... I want to see a good Superman movie. I haven't seen a good Superman movie since the freaking 70s. And that just makes me want to cry. I mean, I'm so happy to be living in this day and age where we're getting just wonderful Marvel movies. Just great movies. I've been re-watching them. Even Thor Dark World and Doctor Strange. Two movies that I just kind of liked the first time. I really enjoyed them the second time around. I am so grateful to be living during this age, that we can see these heroes that we grew up with reading on paper, illustrated by some of the greatest artists in the world, seeing them come to life on the screen. And it, it just hurts me inside that Warner Brothers is, is, is missing the ship. I don't know what they're trying to do over there because they don't seem to be having a problem with their TV shows. I don't watch their TV shows because I ain't got the time, but from what I understand, they're doing pretty well. So whoever's in charge of that area of Warner Brothers gets it. And maybe in the end, Warner Brothers as a corporation, they don't consider the TV shows, you know, that's just a small slice of the pie. So they don't, they don't really have their hands too much into it. The, the, you know, the, the shareholders and the, the, the boardroom members and whoever the, whatever the crap that people who work for corporations are called. They're not all that into it. 
because it's not a big revenue maker. But they look at Marvel Comics and Disney making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars every single year. They want a bit of that. They're just going about it wrong. And it makes me sad. I can't imagine what it's like for people who love DC more than Marvel. I'm a Marvel guy. I keep saying it. I'm not a DC guy. But I read a lot of DC growing up. And I do have a, an, an affection for these characters. So I can't imagine people who have been in love with DC all their lives. They're, they're in this era now where they're making these great Marvel movies. Warner Brothers can't seem to figure out how to make any great DC movies. Like I said, there's been a few. And we had some good Batman movies. But they can't figure out Superman. Here's what I think they should do with Superman. Let's just stop this whole live action stuff, okay? Let's just go full on 100% Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse slash Pixar, all CGI, huge freaking giant robot Superman adventure. Let's get the guys, the guys and girls who did Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse and say, hey, would you make a Superman movie for us? They need to stop trying to ground Superman is the point that I'm trying to make. Yes, they want to make him relatable to modern day audiences, but you don't do that by grounding him. Superman got to be punching out giant robots. He's just a small, he's just a kid from small town Kansas, but he's got to be punching out giant robots. Let me know if you agree. My name is Steven and I'm just another fanboy. I'm out. Just Another Fanboy is a presentation of the Stephen or Else podcast. Questions and comments can be directed to feedback at stephenorelse.com. You can support the show for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com slash stephenrorr and get instant access to the My Other Podcast podcast, a weekly show about whatever crawls its way into my tiny little mind just moments before I tap record. You can find me on the World Wide Web at stephenorelse.com or find me on Twitter and Instagram by searching for at Stephen or Else. I also encourage you to subscribe to the show, leave us a five-star review, and share this episode with a friend. Just Another Fanboy is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. You can find that over at comicspodcasts.com. All links will be in the show notes. Good job.